Today we're gonna to talk about one of the very best ways to get the most organic traffic from search, from Google and other search engines. I wanna start kind of with this question, are silos of content mm -hmm. important? A lot of internet marketers, a lot of bloggers, SEO people talk about siloing your content into very distinct, specific groupings. And I think I can see why, but my answer to that question is no, that's not the answer. All right, if you remember, it was probably like, what, a year and a half ago yeah, now, probably. we did a video about a, non, a keyword research method or one of the ways that we do keyword, keyword research that has really helped improve our content and the way that we rank. And the big piece of that was topical authority. That is really the key to what we talked about in that video. If you don't remember it, you can go check it out. Um, it was worth the watch. But topical authority, I think that's kind of where we need to start in this conversation. Absolutely. So with topical authority, basically what we're talking about is we cover enough of a topic, a specific topic, we cover it with enough depth that Google starts to treat you as an yeah. authority on that topic. It's literally the content itself on your website that speaks to your authority. It's a huge component of EEAT that gets overlooked because it's one that's not just an easy, turn it on, do it sort of a thing. And the point here is that Google's giving just a ton of preference to sites that have that real depth of content and have developed that topical authority. So if you remember in that last video, we talked a lot about how you can take your niche and you can break it down into categories and how you can break those down into sort of subcategories or subtopics and how you could break those down even further into specific groupings or clusters of specific search queries that are easily grouped together that you can interlink between and such. Today we're gonna to talk about exactly how we do that. So once you've gone down and you've broken down into a more specific topic, for your website, how do we make sure that we get that depth of content and cover that topic with sufficient thoroughness, I should say, <laughs> to make sure that we're developing that topical authority? So okay, so the first thing, step. yeah, let's go step one here. Um, we need to take a hint from Google. Google gives us, well, there's a lot of information. First of all, they don't give us. Yeah. Uh, there is some information that they do give us. And so when you're going to do these searches, and we'll show you here on the computer, when you go to do these searches, you can actually look at some hints Google gives you on the search engine ranking page or the SERP to, to help you know what to write and then what's also very closely related. So let's use an example here. In that video before, we talked about cycling and how that's just a huge niche. We niche down to road cycling. And one of the subtopics we picked was just maintenance for road bicycles. So road bicycle maintenance. Now I do a search here and I get some search results. That's a really, really, really broad search. Ranking for that, you're, you're gonna need to be kind of in the, just one of the top mm -hmm. websites, right? But here, we get here to the people also ask. This is one of my favorite sections of the SERP when I'm trying to do any sort of keyword research or search analysis, I should say. So here, what maintenance should I do on my road bike? That's a better question. Google's not even quite sure mm -hmm. what it is that we're looking for. Road bicycle maintenance right. schedule. Yeah, frequency. it's not even a question. It's, it's just yeah. the topic. So here's what maintenance should I do and how often should I do it? Those are probably the two highest level questions mm -hmm. under road bicycle maintenance. Well, I can open one up here. I can go and actually do that search. So I'm gonna actually hit command or control and click on that and it's gonna go do that search. What maintenance should I do on my road bike? I'm gonna do the same for the other one, how often, and I'm actually gonna go do those individual searches. But I'm gonna close these up, and you'll see that when I open those, Google added a couple more. As I open and close these, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of other searches that Google sees are closely related to road bicycle maintenance. The more times I open and close this, the further <laughs> astray it's gonna kind of go. Like, does cycling burn belly fat? Still a good question. <laughs> Still a good astray. question, <laughs> but, but not, not really, it doesn't have anything to do with road bicycle maintenance. But there are some of these things like, is it worth getting a bike tune-up? If I click on that one, what sort of additional ones? What's the average price of a tune-up? What does a road bike tune-up include? These are pretty good questions, mm -hmm. right? I can also go and do, when I do these searches, I can see the people also ask on those. Mm -hmm. You can see that Google is sort of taking that initial question, yeah. breaking that down into other questions, breaking each of those down into more questions, and a lot of those are gonna overlap, and you end up with this huge web of different mm -hmm. queries that people are searching. This is the hint we take yeah. from Google. Google thinks these are related, so these are probably topics that, I mean, we're not gonna ever cover all of them because I could probably do this forever and Google would keep coming up with new questions to ask. But as long as they're closely related to where I started, I should probably add those to a list of potential queries to include in blog posts. That doesn't mean I write a specific article about each one, right. but it does mean that there's specific queries that I wanna make sure that I cover 
in the content that I create on my website. Now, when we use this method of finding those questions using people also ask, some people will say, well, aren't we supposed to write for the reader, right? Uh, rather than writing for the algorithm or writing for Google. Yeah, like we're, we shouldn't be trying to game the algorithm, exactly. we should be writing for natural right. for readers. But the reality is the reason Google thinks these are related is based on user data. Yeah. It's because people type in a question and then they look for another question and another question and Google has millions, if not billions of searches to find out exactly yeah. what people want to know when they're doing these, these searches. Exactly, and so honestly, when you think about it, like that is absolutely for the reader. What maintenance do I need to do? Oh, well, you need to lubricate your chain. Oh, okay, well, how do I lubricate my chain? Well, what lubrication should I use for my chain? If you just tell me, here's a list of maintenance you should do. Okay, how do I do each of those things? And you don't give me guidance on any of those things. You don't link to another article where you covered, here's how to lubricate a bicycle chain. Then you you haven't actually helped right. me that much. You've given me a piece of the answer, but you haven't gone deeper. And so it's actually much more helpful but in addition to being helpful to the reader, it's taking it a step further and it's showing both the reader and the search engine that you've covered the topic thoroughly, so you must know what you're talking about, right? Hopefully. <laughs> that brings us to step two, and that's when you need to take the list of articles or the queries that you've come up with and you need to decide to write some of them. Now, that might seem kind of like an obvious step, but it's not quite, because when you go through and do those original search query searches and you add them to your list, you might think that once they're on your list that you'll just go and write all of them. And that's not always the case. You, while we do definitely want to cover the topic thoroughly, there are some articles where it, they just don't justify an individual article. Right. One example here is when we were doing some searches here on bicycle chain lubrication, we started seeing questions. Can I use olive oil? Can I use WD-40? Can I use, I mean, the, the list went on and on and on we probably could have written 15 or 20 response style articles on each individual right. can I query. Can I use WD-40 right. and then a thousand word article? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Right. And so probably what I would do is I would take some of those, maybe cluster a couple of those into a single article. And, you know, and maybe it's four bicycle chain lubrication options you didn't know existed or something yeah. like that. And you can still rank for each of the individual search queries. Can I use olive oil? Can I use WD-40? You can still rank for those, but you just write the information in a single article, making it more helpful and more concise. One of the ways we would have taken each of those and turned it into its own article in the past would have been to, to say, you know, can I use WD-40 as a bicycle chain lubricant? give a quick answer and it usually would have some caveat like, well, you can, but it's not as good as other things and maybe it can cause other problems if you don't get it all cleaned off before you add a different lubricant. Maybe, I don't know. And if that's the case, then we would then go into, here's why it can work or when it can work, but here's why it's maybe not the best. Here's how to get it off of your bike chain later when you add another lubricant and on and on and on, right? But a lot of those things, we're starting to stray from the original query of can I use WD-40? And a lot of the why you can or why you cannot is gonna be the same information for why you should or should not use olive oil right. or just other different things, right, that are available to you. And so what we can do is group those into one specific article and, and that's gonna work out just great. And then when it gets to the part of here's how to properly clean off the temporary lubricants that you can use in a pinch before you put on a good lubricant, that's its own article and I link to that mm -hmm. from this one. You wanna know how to clean off the olive oil? Here's an article mm -hmm. where I talk about my process for lubricating your chain and I go through the whole cleaning process. It's a great way to interlink, yeah. but yes. it's also a great way to make sure we cover it in depth without getting super repetitive on the website. And which brings us to our kind of step three here. And that is just, I'll say go crazy. Don't go too crazy, <laughs> but go crazy with interlinking. Interlinking is what really connects all this together. Yeah. You know, G Google has to see that we have content that is related to our other content. And by linking, we do, uh, by interlinking our content together, we do that. Interlinking is key. And this is why I talked about siloing in the beginning. This is not siloing. We should make sure that we link between articles wherever it makes sense. So if the linking between your articles ends up looking more like a really big disorganized web, that's probably better than if they look like a very strict, straight up and down silo, where this article links to this one, which links to this one, which links to this one, which links to this one. That's not actually how information really is. And that is not how Google's sort of topical map 
of topics across the internet, it's not what theirs looks like either. So it's not what yours should look like. Now, when you go to fill out a category or a subcategory or a cluster using this method that we've just talked about, you may have the question arise in your mind like, well, there are some articles that are too competitive for me to write, or there are some articles that just don't get enough search volume based on my research. We're not as concerned about that because when you're writing these articles, it is likely that you're still going to do some analysis. You're still going to make sure that on the top, like kind of topically or as the cluster goes, that there is still, there's low competition or at least competition that you could win if you had enough authority or, you know, or mm -hmm. as far as search volume goes, there are going to be some articles that have more search volume than others. When you're filling out the cluster, the authority that that gives you in the eyes of Google is going to end up outweighing the value of just only trying to go for articles that are perfectly fit for what you think you need to write. For a long time, people focused a lot on long tail keywords mm -hmm. because they would have really low competition, so they'd be really easy to win. And ideally, we'd want ones that actually have search volume right. greater than zero. The problem is you don't know the search volume. Yep. No matter how much you're paying for a keyword research tool, they don't know the actual search volume. Many searches that say they have zero, I find over and over and over again, I write them and I'm getting hundreds of views, sometimes yeah. thousands yeah. of views every month on many of those articles I wrote for those kinds of search queries. So what I'm saying and what we're saying here is we don't wanna to worry too much about that. We yeah. do wanna use our brain and make sure that we don't write a huge cluster of content on this whole topic right. and there's four people in the whole world right. that yeah, care like about if it. Yeah, like how do I you know, lubricate the chain on a 1993 random topic you know, or random, like if it gets so yes. small that it's just like, who's gonna, like, who's gonna be searching that? Like you're, you've gone a little bit too deep at that point. And whenever we, and I think you make a perfect point there, when we make a distinction, yes that is unnecessary. There's no yep. actual difference. Exactly. If lubricating the chain on a specific model of bicycle is, doesn't matter, then let's not yeah. write that specific thing. Yeah. And then the other piece you mentioned there was competition. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that there are some queries that are just gonna be extremely competitive because they're kind of the most obvious questions that people would ask in that niche. But imagine if you didn't have the answer to those questions anywhere on your website. How authoritative would anybody, including Google, view your website as? So a great example of that would be just a complete road bicycle maintenance guide or even a road bicycle maintenance schedule. I'm sorry, every single one of these websites has one of those on it. <laughs> they just do, and they're probably not that different from each other. However, that article is gonna get linked to from probably two dozen other articles yeah. on your website and will link out to those other articles. Google will see that they're closely related. People will see that they're related. Even if you never rank for road bicycle maintenance schedule as a query, that one article is going to help you develop authority for the whole topic of road bicycle maintenance. Over the long run, as you continue to build the authority on your website, it could help those larger topics end up ranking. Yeah, As totally. they get more traffic and totally. as you become more of an authority, if you had never written that article in the first place, you were not gonna get the traffic. But now that you wrote it, and you're starting to get traffic through it from these other articles, Google's just going to, yeah, your authority meter, however they measure it, you know, it's just gonna boost and you're gonna end up having a better chance of ranking those yeah. bigger topics in your industry. Every authoritative website started somewhere. Yep. So you're starting wherever you are right now. I want you to build real authority and I want you to be extremely successful with the content you're creating. So make sure you check out the other videos on this channel. That's what we're all about, is helping you succeed as a content creator. We'll see you in our next one.